Welcome everyone. We're excited to have you all with us today for a webinar on boosting your signal and your profits with SureCall cell phone signal boosters. Our presenters today are Andy Belasi, SnapAV product manager for distributed products, and Eric Mersel from SureCall. My name is Heidi Nielsen. I'm a marketing manager at SnapAV and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. Before we get started, let's go through a few quick housekeeping items and then I'll turn it over to Andy. First, we will be recording the presentation and we'll send you a copy by email within the next few business days. That email is going to include a coupon code for $100 off a SureCall Fusion 4 Home, Fusion 5S, Fusion 5X, or Force 5 Kit. So definitely be on the lookout for that email. And lastly, we are planning to have time of at the end of the presentation for a Q&A session. So please send in your questions at any time during the webinar using the question and answer feature in the webinar control panel. All right, and now I will turn it over to Andy. Welcome, Andy. Thanks a lot, Heidi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to take uh, just a quick opportunity to thank everyone for taking the time out of your busy days to join us. I'm very excited to have this uh, webinar with SureCall, a very great partner of ours and continues to be a great partner. Uh, hopefully, uh, our goal here is to make sure that they become a great partner of yours and being able to increase the profits of your business and offer and uh, give a product to your clients, uh, another thing in your toolbox that you can use uh, to increase your revenue. With that, uh, I will uh, turn it over to Eric and let him start the presentation. Good deal. And hello, everybody. I, uh, I know everybody said thank you so many times, uh, but thank you again directly from SureCall. Uh, my name is Eric Mersel, and uh, I am the National Sales Manager for uh, Western U.S. and also for Canada. Uh, so any questions you guys have, feel free to, to type them into the question box, take notes on it, and again, as Heidi mentioned at the end, we'll be able to answer most of the questions. So we're going to cover um, some high-level information here. Uh, we're going to cover who we are, who is SureCall, how to present SureCall, and then a couple of these very simple steps to ensure they have a successful installation. So let's start right off the bat with who is SureCall. SureCall has been in business for over 15 years. We spend a majority of our time in the industrial world, so doing very large-scale businesses and buildings, uh, up to about 300,000 square feet. The challenge with doing those buildings is not necessarily to cover the entire open area, but to handle the amount of users that will instinctively be on the inside of that building. So with the technology that we've had within our boosters, uh, which we'll cover in just a little bit, uh, it allows us to be able to handle up to 100 simultaneous users at a time, and that's an incredible feat just thinking about the, uh, the throughput and the capacity of the boosters themselves. We do find ourselves looking, looking at ourselves as a performance leader in cell phone booster technology and we definitely provide consumers with the best technologies and products to make sure that they can stay on the go regardless if they're home or if they're out at the office place. We were founded in 2001 and we're based out of Fremont, California and this is where we designed and manufacture our award-winning cell phone signal boosters. But more importantly, again, going back to what I just said, is we put the emphasis on the product performance and more importantly, the user experience. Our support structure between partnering with SnapAV and their tech team who has been certified up to level one, they have the ability to answer every one of your questions, troubleshoot the product if you're out in the field, and if we can't get the answer, uh, the question resolved at that point, then they get us involved and we have you know, our, our dedicated tech team that are there to, to help kind of walk them through it. So the user experience is so important, it gets down to a point where we have less than a 1% return rate on all of our products. So if we do the proper steps, we install the product properly, just like anything else, it's going to work and you can have the, the belief in the product that you can, if you say that the customer to the customer that it will work for them, it will definitely work. To get a hold of the tech support uh, with SnapAV, just call their standard number, 866-838-5052, and they'll be able to walk you through any of the troubleshooting uh, techniques that we have to ensure that we get the product up and running if you're having some issues with it. Again, we do have our regional-based sales managers. So myself, I take care of the, the Midwest area and everything west of the Mississippi. Mr. Ken O'Connor is the uh, key account manager for SnapAV, and he is based off uh, based in Atlanta, Georgia, and he's able to manage all the East Coast for us. 
And then Brian Haggerty down in the, uh, the state of Florida, I know it looks like a small little state and a small territory, actually also helps us out on our enterprise side doing the larger businesses on the East Coast. Since he lives in Florida, he, does, he definitely um, is, a, is a benefit to our team to have him down in that market, which is a very large market for us. You can feel free to give any of us a call at any point in time, uh, and then we'll walk you through any type of uh, jobs that you might have coming up, layouts, building recommendations, all that good stuff for you. So what is the size of the market? If we had to take a look at the overall industry, this industry is a $2.3 billion opportunity. Now within that marketplace, of course, you've got within our vertical market, there's three different types of booster technology that are out there. There's their large venues, so if you get into uh, convention centers, sporting arenas, things of that nature, that would use a, a, a DAS system or a DAS system. And a DAS system allows the, allows the manufacturers or the carriers to be able to have multiple users on an extended cell site. So they essentially just rebuild a, another cell site within that one particular area. Then you have the, the next market, which is what we follow, which is the sub-DAS network. All the boosters that we sell, they do not require any type of FCC um, pre-authorization or carrier authorization. It's all been done behind the scenes. So that market, if I looked at that, that particular market itself is almost about 70% of the overall $2.3 billion industry that's out there. So this is a huge opportunity for us to really kind of look at what we have the opportunity to do. The opportunity isn't just for the consumer in the residential or home area. If you've got schools, colleges, restaurants, uh, warehouses, medical area arenas, and of course, if you have one home and you have a vacation home somewhere else, that home also falls into it. So there's a lot of great opportunities, and it really, if we start looking at the, the opportunity for you guys, it's pretty simple. I mean, everybody's favorite radio station, right? WIIFM. If we were able to add a whole new source of revenue into your bottom line, I think it would become a very popular uh, a resource for you guys to be able to sell. So if we were able to do only one sure call booster per week over the course of a year, you could add an additional $100,000 of revenue. That's a lot of extra money for doing something you guys are already doing out in the field. So what causes weak cell phone signals? There's three main culprits to it. The distance from a cell phone tower plays a very large role. Of course, the terrain aspect of it with all the large mountains that are out there, buildings themselves if you're in a more of a flatland area. Uh, buildings play a very large role in it. And of course, the building materials themselves. And I'm sure there's a lot of opportunities out there that the phones work great on the outside of the building, but then you walk to the inside and you notice that your service drops. Sometimes it drops to a point where they just get the robot calls, the static calls, uh, and then it even can affect the amount of speed that the data can offer on the cell phones nowadays. So building materials do play a very large role for us. And boosters work very simply. As long as there is a usable outdoor signal, we collect that outdoor signal off of what we call a donor antenna, or in, in this particular case, there's two different types. There's a Yagi and an Omni. And then that then feeds via an LMR 400 series cable or a 50 ohm cable. We feed that into the booster itself. And then the booster does what it just says it does. It's going to amplify the signal and then rebroadcast it through the uh, a series, either a single antenna or up to four antennas on the inside of the building depending on the size of the building itself. So it's a very simple system to be able to work with. And uh, I know one of the questions that always comes up during this time is, Eric, you mentioned that there's an LMR 400 or 50 ohm cable. Can I retro this into an RG6 or an RG11 uh, that's already pre-wired in the house? And the answer is yes. We can do that. But during the planning stages, make sure you let us know that we're going to be utilizing that style cable. Uh, it's all, this is a numbers game. And it comes down to the amount of loss within a system to ensure that we can get the system to, to set, set the right expectations for the customer to make sure it works properly. So why do we want to present SureCall to our customers? Think about just yourself. You run your own businesses and you're always on the go. And it doesn't matter if you're sitting at home in your home office or if you're out and about. We rely on our cell phones to stay connected with our loved ones, to stay connected with our business partners, or just to see what the heck is going on on Facebook. This is just the way that our world has turned with our phones, and we find ourselves using them in more places than, than not. Take a look around next time you go out to dinner. Everybody's got their phone either on the table, in their hand, and sometimes it's all families. They're not even talking to each other anymore, which I think is a pretty bad thing, but it is what it is. 
People are doing product reviews when they're out at the shopping malls. People are sitting there and uh, checking out to see what the lowest prices are when they're out there. So it's become such an integral part of our business that it's more important now than ever before to ensure that we've got a, a, a solid cellular network across the board. If we think about the opportunity when it comes down to your customers in their home office, it's from the small business owners to the Fortune 500 executives. A drop call can truly cost them a ton of business that's out there. And if it doesn't cost them business right off the bat, their consumers or their end users, their clients become more and more frustrated how they can't stay on the phone. And if you're working from home trying to stay in touch with your sales staff or your marketing staff, whatever it might be that you're trying to drive that business, it becomes very difficult to do so if you're constantly dropping the phone calls out there. So how do we present it to the consumers? Well, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. And you're on location almost every day. And just look down at your own phone. You'll notice if it's working or not. The way that the best practice is, if I'm on the outside of the building and I can maintain a phone call all the way around the outside of the building, that's going to allow me to, first off, know in my mind that I can make this system work. And while you're also on location, there's a lot of different things that we can do. We can have a proof of concept kit, which is one of our demo kits, like our Fusion for Home demo kit, which has the smaller booster that comes with our signal meter. But it also allows you to do a very, very fast installation to be able to set up an outside antenna, drop the cable through the house, plug it into the booster, and show the customer, the end user, that the system will work, and we can take a system like this and build upon it to give you the coverage that we're expected. We can also provide a lot of marketing support. So we'll talk about additional training beyond just what we're doing here today. But this additional marketing support will allow you to provide us with your business logos, your company logos, and we can post that to your to postcards, the trifolds, if you have a website and you want a web banner put up there. We can provide all these different artworks and all these different marketing coin or marketing assets to reach out to your customers to help you kind of take this and really make it part of your business to continue to grow an additional revenue stream that's out there for you. There's some simple steps that we have to follow them. No matter which we go about doing a system, uh, there's three simple steps. The pre-work, the product, and then, of course, the installation. When I look at the pre-work side of the world, we have to make sure that we ask the right questions. So we want to make sure that the outdoor signal is strong enough and usable for our boosters to be able to amplify. And again, as I mentioned before, are we using the sure call cable or pre-existing cable runs? And then we get into a couple more additional questions here, like how large is the building? Some of our boosters are designed for up to 4,000 square feet. Some boosters are designed up to 25,000 square feet. And then, of course, what are the actual dimensions of the building? And then what carriers the customers are interested in, in, in focusing on? Most of the time in the residential world, the carriers, the, the consumers, are really just looking at a single carrier solution. The good news is our boosters will work for every carrier that's out there in North America for voice all the way through data. And then, of course, we want to know what type of coverage the customer is looking for. Is it a theater room? Is it just a den? Is it the whole building that we're trying to get uh, coverage in? That will help us also determine the type of boosters that are out there. Now, to keep this really simple for you guys, there is a, a, a site survey form that we ask you to fill out. And if you send it back to the, uh, the SNAP team, we can get a building recommendation completed. But by doing this, you'll start to kind of not only educate yourself on what to look for when you're out in the field, but it'll also make, start making you more self-reliant on the product. Just like anything new, you do it once, you got it twice, you're more of an expert on it. Three times, you don't even really need our support when it comes to designing a product. You just know where to put the products uh, throughout the home itself. If you are going to use our design service and you have four plans, we'll be able to provide back to you an entire layout for you. And this layout is a great way to be able to look to help you understand total costs in the job. So it'll help you be able to understand cable runs, the labor costs involved for pulling the extra cable if we are running new cable. So you can provide a better bid or quote to your end user, to your client, to ensure that there's no hidden or surprise charges when you get into the home itself. And this is something free that we do um, for you with any, any um, system design that you submit to us. So we talked a lot about finding the outdoor signal, and there's two ways that we can do it. One way you can do it is utilizing your cell phone. A lot of great apps that are out there, one of them is Signal Finder, and that'll help you see what the actual signal strength is on the outside. You can do a pre and a post installation demo for a customer to show that I've got this much signal on my phone prior. When I turn the booster on, I have X amount more signal within the home or the building. 
The only drawback to utilizing an app that's on a phone is it only gives you your carrier's readings. So if you are on AT&T and the customer's on Verizon, you could run into some hiccups because you don't have all the visibility to all the signals that are coming out there from the different carriers. So the SureCall signal meter will read every one of the carriers that are out there. It'll break it down from LTE, from Verizon, and AT&T. And then it can break down into all the different cellular voice modes that are out there from cellular 800 to the PCS 1900 and even to the AWS 2100 network. The signal meter will give you a more complete picture as to what these outdoor signals that you're able to work with. And again, this just comes down to just setting the right expectations for the customers. And there's a lot of different solutions that are out there, but you know, we really made it kind of very simple when you look at the different products for you guys. So we make products that, again, are all FCC and carrier approved. They all come with a three-year warranty, and, of course, they come with a lifetime pre- and post-tech um, support uh, for your installation needs that are out there. In addition to that, every one of the boosters are sold as they were tested by the FCC. So they were sold with an inside antenna, an outdoor antenna. It also comes with a roll of cable depending on the booster. It, you typically, on the larger boosters, it's a 75-foot outdoor run and then a 50-foot uh, pre-terminated run for indoor. And then, it, you know, obviously, you can pick the different antennas you would need for different solutions, either a panel inside or a dome inside. When I look at the products, I know that they're looking on here, there's five different SKUs that you can have an opportunity to pick from. The most popular SKUs that we have are really starting with the Fusion for Home. Uh, the Fusion for Home is a great booster. It'll cover up to 4,000 square feet. Um, and that's when I say square footage of these, you've got to think of it as in the perfect situation with the perfect outdoor signal uh, and open air space. So if it was a big open uh, great room and or maybe an office space, they had a call center in it, big lot of cubicles that are in there, that's how we get up to our 4,000 square feet. Um, I like to look at this booster to be able to do one floor. So it's a single floor solution. Uh, it'll do up to that 4,000 square feet if you had a larger residential home. They'll handle up to eight simultaneous users. And again, all the boosters we're talking about here are all 4G uh, compatible. So they'll do 4G, 2G, LTE, and of course 3G. Um, because it is FCC approved, it meets the 72 dB gain and one watt output of the, uh, for what the carriers will, will allow on their networks. Another feature set that all these boosters have, um, with the exception of one of them, but this particular booster has your manual attenuation dials or gain control dials right on the top of the booster itself. So this will allow you to be able to custom fit with this particular booster to fit the needs of each individual installation. There isn't a cookie cutter installation or a cookie cutter job. Um, sometimes you may not be able to get the extra distance between your outside and your inside antennas. And I'll touch that in just one second here. But it allows you to really kind of adjust for the home itself. The Fusion 5X is probably our go-to booster. This booster is a one-size-fits almost all in most situations. It'll cover up to 20,000 square feet. It'll handle up to 20 simultaneous callers. More importantly, this is one of our newer boosters that has all the software built into the inside of it. So it's truly a plug-and-play solution for your, for your installation. There are no outside dials on it or um, attenuators on the outside. The software will do everything for you. Now, one thing that this booster does allow you to get into is our Sentry device, which I'll talk about at the very end here. Uh, but our Sentry is a remote monitoring piece that will truly allow you to custom fit it in there, but also allow you for some more notification um, if there's ever an issue with the booster itself. This booster ships with four either dome and or panel antennas, um, and it retails for $1,700. So it's a great product, fits a good price point that is uh, – something that we found in our industry that doesn't necessarily, it, there's a solution for it, and the consumers are able to pay that amount of money for this particular solution because of what's available out there right now from carriers and um, other providers don't necessarily always fit the bill. As we go from the Fusion 5X up to the largest booster, our Force 5, this is a direct descendant from our industrial style boosters. And it'll do up to 25,000 square feet. Uh, but more importantly, I handle up to 100 simultaneous users. And we do that from a lot, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, the booster itself uh, has separate uplink and downlink control. So our uplink is back to the towers and our downlink is everything in the building. That allows that to have less collisions of the frequencies on the inside of the booster, which allow for greater throughput of the booster itself. 
also the size of the filters on the inside of this thing are considerably larger compared to the other gooses that are on the marketplace right now. Uh, the, the gain control uh, for the attenuation, you can see there's a little red dial, a red line that's on the top of that booster. Not only does it allow you to adjust the downlink on like the, uh, the first booster that we showed you, but it also allows us to adjust the uplink. So if the signal is really, really strong on the outside, this particular booster will allow you to attenuate that without having to go and buy different attenuators to put in line. It's all built into the booster itself. This booster will also work with the uh, Sentry device uh, that's out there in the marketplace. So what is Sentry? Sentry is a time saver. Sentry itself will help you really ensure that this system will be installed properly before you even walk out of the customer's home. The Sentry device itself is a little box that connects to the network and then connects directly via ribbon cable right into the GUI import of both the Fusion 5X and the Force 5 booster. And we'll monitor for you. It'll monitor overpowering. Maybe the tower goes up in six, seven, eight months from now and it's too strong of a signal. Maybe there's oscillation. There's a, a storm rolls through and it blew your antenna out of, out of alignment just a little bit. Uh, over attenuation and just like the, the knobs on the booster itself, this device will allow you to control everything but remotely. So you will receive an email. If, any, if there's any issues on the booster itself, you receive an email, and you'll be able to go in and remotely reset the booster or increase and decrease the gain. So it's not eliminating truckling, but most of the time, if there is an issue with the booster, we can do it just by simply adjusting a gain or two on the booster itself. Um, and it really kind of speeds up that process. Plus, it also puts you in the, in the know, right? So you're, you get to make the phone call to the customer, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I realize that there might be an issue with the booster. I'm going to try and fix this remotely. And if I can't, I'll get out there as soon as I can to make this thing work. Makes you look like a superhero. Makes you look like a rock star. Now, this Sentry device does retail for 480 bucks. There isn't, uh, we do not charge a reoccurring monthly fee for it. It's all included in the, process, the product itself. Uh, there is some software you have to download onto your PC. But once you've got that downloaded into it, it's a very, very simple program to be able to utilize. Um, in our next training, we'll talk more about how we utilize that, uh, how we do, how we get into the century and how we utilize that. So the final step itself is, is installing the product. And installing the product is pretty simple. I want you to think of our antennas as a wireless access point. You get about the same penetration of a wireless access point as you would off of our antennas themselves. There are some materials that the antenna just cannot pass through, the signal cannot pass through because it's either maybe in the kitchen with the large stainless steel appliances, it, maybe it's between floors and there's radiant heat or it's tile or ceramic or marble. A lot of things that will reject the signal itself. But regardless, no matter which way we look at it, there's two different outdoor antennas that we want to, we can install outside. The outside omni antenna is a very simple antenna to be able to do, to, to install. There isn't any alignment. There isn't any aiming with this particular antenna, and I would use an outside omni antenna if I was in a strong signal area, more of an urban area where the outdoor signal is pretty strong. The outside Yagi antenna does take a little bit more aiming, but it's a very simple thing to do, especially with the signal meter, and you connect it into that, and you can really kind of point it and shoot towards the tower. Uh, but this is an antenna that I would want to utilize if I had to do one of two things. One, I was in a very weak, more rural signal area where I need to be able to penetrate further away to grab the power. Or two, the carrier of, of choice from the customer is whichever one, ABC, but I can pick and choose the towers that are out there so I can I know that I'm hitting that and getting the best signal for that particular customer. But again, that's just going to wire right into the booster and then the inside, the options for inside are either a dome or a panel antenna. Dome antennas are great to cover a very large area and panel antennas are good to penetrate through more walls because it's a higher gain. So to kind of take a look at it a little bit differently, if I looked at an omni antenna or a dome antenna, dome antennas are going to fill in a very wide uh, spaced out area just because they go out at about 180 degrees and they kind of drop straight down into the home. The higher up, the, the better. So if you have a taller ceiling, if you have nine foot ceilings, it'll work better than an eight foot ceiling. Uh, but it's a great antenna to, be able to use to fill very large areas. Panel antennas are more like a flashlight approach. They come out at about a 65 degree angle, and the areas here that aren't covered, you're going to get residual coverage in there, but you're more of a focused beam, so you can shoot it down a longer hallway. Again, I can penetrate more walls to be able to get better coverage throughout the, uh, the, the, the job site itself. 
And again, the benefits of becoming a, a certified installer go way beyond just the, the technical support that you, know, you would learn um, by taking the extra test here. Now, I know within the next seven, maybe 14 days, um, based on your feedback, we'll, we'll get into a longer presentation where it'll be an hour and a half long, uh, really kind of get into the nuts and the bolts of this presentation as to what, how to really install a product, what to look for, what do the math equations look like um, to ensure that we get the right service that's out there. And of course, if you do get certified, that's when all those different marketing assets really come into play for you. The banners for internet, uh, for your website, the postcards, the trifolds, um, all the other stuff with the, the, the information sheets, product information sheets are available to you now. Um, but anything else beyond that, that certified installer is really going to be able to help. And if you want to kind of get a jump start on it before you become certified, we do offer uh, through the SNAP AV webpage, if you just go into our, uh, our product pages that are on there, once you're logged in, you'll be able to pull down every one of our training videos. And we've got training videos that are six minutes long, eight minutes long, an hour and a half long. We've got training videos that are really kind of set for you guys to answer, I mean, to, to go deeper into this presentation than what we've uh, done today. So with that, um, I know we've got uh, just a little bit more time here to kind of do a lot of Q&A. I saw some stuff that popped up, uh, but I want to turn this back over uh, to the SNAP team to kind of look at all the, uh, all right. the different opportunities that are there. Thanks, Eric. That was a great presentation. And yes, we do have a few minutes left for some questions. So let's take a look. All right, the first question, does SureCall offer a signal meter? We do. Um, so our signal meter itself, and I can just pull this up really quick here. Um, our signal meter itself is available to you. Uh, we offer it in a couple different ways. We sell the signal meter alone. Um, the signal meter itself, uh, if you purchase it alone, it's just about $300 at dealer cost. But more, we do offer it in the demo kit. Uh, the demo kit is the Fusion for Home. And that dealer cost is right around $450, uh, which that would give you the Fusion for Home kit, all of the antennas that we make, and then, of course, the signal meter. And uh, the reason why we designed that particular kit at that entry-level price point is now you have that opportunity to do that um, proof of uh, performance install that we talked about at the very beginning. So you can drop the cables outside with the antenna and then do a very quick mock install to show the client. Um, a lot of our customers, a lot of our dealer uh, partners will keep that meter or keep the kit and do that. And then you got some guys that will turn around and sell that kit to their first client and then keep the meter themselves. Um, but our meter does have some distinct modes in it that will really kind of help uh, eliminate the confusion. And I'm just going to show you really quick here. Uh, there's mode one, mode two, and mode three. I'm going to get into mode three, so what, all we really want to use, how we get there, is we just hold down that top left button, and that will get you between mode one to mode two, then you let go, then you hold it down again, and it'll go to mode three, and mode three itself gives you a, a very fast way to do a site survey. There's only five numbers we have to write down. And you would take, the reason why it's so fast is we take the entire frequency range and then we give you the average signal strength on the outside of the building itself. So it's very, very quick to be able to use and a great meter to use. Great. Thanks, Eric. And also that signal meter is available through SNAP-AV. So um, for those who are interested, be sure to check out the Share Call section on our website. Um, and for those of you who missed the beginning, um, you can submit your questions using the question and answer feature in the webinar control panel. Um, so take a look at that on the side of your screen and send in those questions. All right, next question for Eric. Um, the design service, is that free only for buildings that are greater than um, 6,000 square feet? Uh, great question, and the answer is yes, it is. Um, I just realized that as I was going through the slide back here that it did say 6,000 square feet uh, and above. Any any job site that you have that's below that, send it over to us and uh, we'll get it taken care of for you. Okay, great. We'll do the same thing we do now. Though. Okay. Um, let's see. Is it necessary to notify carriers of locations of boosters? It is. So at the very end of uh, an install, the final step is truly to be able to register the booster with the carrier. 
Now, it's something that the carriers requested us to do. You don't have to register with all of the carriers, just one of them. So if it's a Sprint customer, you can just click on them. And we can send you these email links as well, uh, but we can send you the, uh, the Sprint link. You click on it, it'll ask for the customer's last name, the billing address, the booster model, and the serial number of it, and then you hit Submit. And that's as far as you have to go with it. That looks easy enough. Let's see, next question. Um, if we use Fusion 5X, is it necessary to use all four indoor antennas? It is not. Um, we did have the uh, booster recertified uh, so we can utilize less than that. But uh, the booster, in order to get this full 20,000 square feet out of it, uh, the four antennas would be required, especially in a residential home, just because of the extra walls and, and uh, other building materials that are in play there. Uh, but I do have a lot of partners, dealer partners, that will take a two-way splitter, put two antennas on it. Uh, I've got some guys that use one antenna on it, and it's uh, it's in a very capable booster regardless of which way uh, you install it. All right. Thanks, Eric. Let's see. Another question on the Fusion 5X. How many floors does that cover, um, and is that different from the Force 5? Yep. So the Fusion 5X and the Force 5, are pretty similar when it comes down to square footage. The 5X will cover up to 20,000 square feet. The Force 5 will cover up to 25,000 square feet. The biggest difference is the amount of users. The 5X will cover up to 20 simultaneous users, and the Force 5 will cover up to 100. It's kind of tricky to, to nail down how many floors a booster will cover. Um, typically, if I looked at a, a standard residential home that, let's just say, was 6,000 square feet, um, one in ten on each floor would cover that entire area. If we have something that's a little bit larger than that, so if I had a building that, let's say it was 20,000 square feet per floor and it was four, four stories tall, maybe a, an MDU or apartment uh, complex, townhome, things of that nature, uh, it really comes down to the building materials inside of it and then we start getting into cable runs. But typically, um, if I looked at a Fusion a Force 5 or a Fusion 5X, um, I would say that depending on the floor itself, at up to 20,000 square feet, you shouldn't have any issues per booster. If you had a four-story building at 20,000 square feet per floor, you had to cover the whole each floor from corner to corner, you would need four boosters to be able to do that. All right. Thanks, Eric. All right. This one is kind of involved, so hopefully you can follow along with me as I read it out to you. Would I use two Yagis to one booster if different carrier towers are in two opposite directions and are far away? Absolutely. You can do that. Um, we have a lot of guys, a lot of dealer partners that will look at that opportunity to say Verizon's in the northerly direction, AT&T's southerly direction, um, and they're, they're only two major carriers that are in a particular area, So, especially when we get more rural. You can mount two antennas up on a roof line and then feed each one of those antennas into a, a two-way splitter or a combiner, if you will, is all we're using it as. So you can feed it into the two-way splitter and then go right into the booster. That's okay. Um, and to kind of go along with that, too, that question usually, the next question that comes up is how many outdoor antennas, how many boosters can one outdoor antenna feed? Um, so we can use one outside antenna for multiple boosters. Let's say you had three boosters on the inside of it. Uh, you can absolutely do that into a three-way splitter and then split that into each one of the boosters. Um, all dependent on outdoor signal. If it's a strong outdoor signal, we can add more boosters per one antenna than if it was a weaker signal. Um, just because we start adding more attenuation every time we split something, we lose the signal. So you know, we'll, we'll work on those on a case-by-case -case basis with you guys. Okay, thanks, Eric. Um, we've got a few questions about the Certified Installer Program. Um, can you talk about what's involved with becoming certified and where people can go to sign up for the program? So we're going to have that all done through, uh, through SNAP. So within the next couple days here, um, I would say, I don't know, what do you think, mid-next week at the latest, we should be able to have the next certified, the actual Certified Installer Program set up so we can get everything done right through SNAP. It'll be nice and easy to register for the for the classes themselves, um, and we'll offer multiple uh, multiple sessions on different days to make it more convenient for you guys as well. So just keep keep a lookout for those emails so we can get you signed up for that. Okay. Um, so what is required for RG6 wiring? 
Uh, so RG6, so all of our boosters uh, have an N-type connector on it. Uh, I shouldn't say all of our boosters. The Fusion for Home has an outdoor, the, the outdoor antenna coming in is an F connector, which is your standard RG6 or RG11. The output of that is an N connector. So all of our boosters have an N connector output. Uh, so you would need an N to an F adapter, which is something that uh, SNAP does have in stock. And if you guys are taking notes, it's, the model number is a CN. Charlie Nancy 2.0, CN20, is the adapter that you would need to adapt on the RG6. All right, let's see, next question. Um, is there a solution for high rises where measuring outdoor signal is difficult or impossible? There is, uh, so SureCall being a very innovative company, uh, looked at a lot of different solutions that are out there and uh, we recently launched a product called the Signal Catcher. And you, would, you still want to utilize our signal meter, and you would walk around to the windows themselves to try and get the, best, the strongest reading we can. And then that would be the location to mount this particular Signal Catcher antenna. The Signal Catcher just mounts in the window itself, and it's a higher gain antenna, um, but you don't have to penetrate to the outside of the building. So perfect examples is what was just stated here, so outdoor or high-rise buildings where it's very tough to get to the, to the roof line or we have no access to the outside of the, uh, the building itself. Uh, in addition to doing a lot of commercial applications where we can mount these in windows to be able to reduce the amount of cable runs or length of cable runs that we have. So we do have that. Um, but to actually measure the outdoor signal, uh, what we would typically have the guys do is just use the signal meter, stand by the windows with the, the standard antenna that comes on it, and then you can connect that, you can adapt that right into the, uh, the signal catcher antenna, place that in the window, and then we can get a, a, a stronger reading uh, to ensure that the system will work right. All right, um, here's a great question that I'm sure a lot of the audience are also wondering. If we have mm -hmm. strong Wi-Fi in a home and the client has Wi-Fi calling, what other advantages can we give our clients for using a cell booster? So, for example, this yeah. this installer has a lot of homes around that have terrible signal, and they'd love to go after those markets, but some homes do have Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's a valid point, right? I mean, there's a Wi-Fi is becoming um, a, a better opportunity for clients to be able to use a phone for just a, a standard user, an average user, right? Um, with the Wi-Fi call, and if I have to think about it, how I would overcome that objection, is cellular, the, the carriers have spent billions of dollars on their network. They don't receive any type of overages if you're utilizing the phone on the inside. Now, with that being said, customers don't care about that, right? Customers don't care that, they just care that it works. They don't care that they're not going to have to pay more for it, more than their benefit. The drawback to that is, I don't care if you have a ubiquity system in the house, which is arguably one of the better systems, or a box, or whatever Wi-Fi system you have in a network, and how robust it is, the cell phone always wants to revert back to the cellular connection. So in an area where there's a stronger outdoor signal but a weaker indoor signal, Wi-Fi calling would tend to lead to more drop calls. As you're on the phone, if you're a roamer like most of us are when you're on the phone, and you walk to an area in the home where the signal might be a little bit stronger, the phone's going to automatically switch, and what will end up happening is you'll start to get that robot voice call, or in the law, uh, drop the call itself. Now, the Wi-Fi calling goes two ways. So we have the, the Wi-Fi calling that's based on the phones themselves, and then the carriers provide what they call a microcell, which is a smaller uh, individual cell system that works off of the Wi-Fi in the home itself. You put it near a window, it gets your GPS Re, uh, location, and then it's uh, your phone, you have to register your phone to that device. Both solutions, Wi-Fi and a microcell, you can hand off into the building. So meaning if I'm on the outside of the building and I walk into the building or if I drive into my garage and I utilize, I'm on my phone, you will hand off to the device itself seamlessly. But you cannot hand off back out. So if you're on your device and you walk back outside, uh, or you get too close to that window, you're going to drop your call. The difference between that and what the SureCall boosters offer is we are just an extension of the cellular network. So the phone doesn't know the difference that it's on a booster system or if it's on the actual signal from the outside of the building itself. All it sees is a stronger cellular network, and that's what it's going to grab onto to be able to continue the conversation, regardless of them going in or out of the building. 
All right, so quick correction to that, Eric. I think you meant to say that Arachnus networking products are the best on the market. <laughs> there we go. Yes, Arachnus. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just move on. Um, let's see. So this dealer has some clients that have very poor cell signal in the one bar range with calls constantly dropping. However, the cell signal outside of the house is also poor. So if that's the case, would sure call still be helpful or do you have another recommendation yeah. for some other type of package? Uh, depends on how weak that signal is outside. So without knowing with the utilizing the signal meter, it'd be very difficult to, to give you a proper answer. But typically, if I'm less than a negative 100 on my signal meter, uh, so negative 100 or stronger, we can make the systems work just fine. Um, I would have to, I would urge you to utilize a Yagi outdoor antenna, the longer, more powerful antenna for the outside. Um, and then we would run that signal into the booster. And just because of the extra gain of the antenna, um, anything less than a negative 100, you know, we're, we're in really good shape and we sh our boosters should be able to live up to the expectations um, of the, the square footage provided on the, 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 by the marketing team and the engineering team. All right, great. So that's one of those. That's one of those cases, really quick. One of those cases that, that getting out to the job site, doing a quick site survey, um, and then having a conversation with us to say, "Hey, will the system actually work? Here's the numbers that I'm working with, and we'll be able to give you the the go no go type of situation." All right, thanks, Eric. Um, let's see. What is the minimum separation distance between the outdoor and closest indoor antenna with the Fusion 5X? Good question. Uh, so the distance is going to depend on who you're going to talk to. Our engineers are going to tell you that they want you know, 75 feet of separation, but there's not a lot of residential homes that you can get 75 feet of separation. Uh, as a rule of thumb, most of my guys, most of our dealer partners that we're working with, uh, they're telling me that they've got anywhere from 15 to 20 feet of separation between the outdoor and the indoor antennas. Um, it's more important to ensure that we're not pointing the antennas at each other. It's kind of like a speaker and a microphone. So if I had my house and my antenna was on the north side of the house and the antenna was facing to the north, the outdoor antenna, I wouldn't want to have my indoor antenna pointing towards the northerly direction. I'd want to have them with the backs to that north wall shooting south, and that would give us the sub additional separation that we would have, that we would look for. Thanks, Eric. Um, we are getting close to our time here, so let's take maybe two more questions and then wrap up. Um, so let's see, next question. Will the boosted signal interfere with Wi-Fi or Zigbee? Um, this dealer has installed systems from competitors that, that did cause problems with Wi-Fi and Zigbee networks. Yeah, typically, we don't see any in, too much interference because they are different frequencies, different spectrums. Um, typically, the Wi-Fi is a higher frequency, so we don't run into many issues. Uh, but there's a, a best practice. If we keep the antennas at least three feet away from uh, an access point or a router system, uh, you won't have any issues with it. Um, a lot of my guys put them in the headers of closets right next to each other. So they'll put the access point and our antenna you know, almost touching, and we haven't had too many issues. I, I haven't think, can't think of any issues that we've had uh, recently. In the past, I, I can remember some, but nothing with the newer 5X boosters and, uh, and bigger. All right, and last question. Um, this is a great question with a great idea built into it. What is the least signal that we can utilize realistically um, if we need a good indoor signal? So this, this person would like to check neighborhoods ahead of time and then market to the residents there directly. Mm -hmm. So that the least amount of signal on the outside, so the weakest signal we can work with, uh, again, is that less than a neg it's stronger than a negative 100 uh, dBm. So if you had the signal meter with you, if you see something that's less than that, uh, you'd be in good shape to be able to, to kind of target a target a, a, a neighborhood. Now, as far as indoor signals, um, really, once you get to above, even in the home, above that negative 100, that's when we start to see cell phones. Um, reduce the, the call quality so you get more of the static and the air in between the, the voices and then you get to drop calls. So typically uh, there, there's a lot of different websites and resources that we can use. A really cool resource for you guys is antennasearch.com. 
AntennaSearch.com gives you the ability to type in an address and then search it, and it will pull up the towers within a four-mile radius of a particular address. So a great website to be able to utilize to kind of look at where there may be opportunities, but it's also a good tool for you to use to know which direction you have to kind of aim the outdoor antennas. All right, big help there. Thanks, Eric. Um, and it looks like that's all we have time for today. So I want to thank everyone again for joining us and remind you to be on the lookout for a follow-up email with a recording of today's session. And that email will also include a coupon code for $100 off a SureCall Fusion for Home, Fusion 5S, Fusion 5X, or Fusion 5 kit. Um, and then lastly, as you're leaving the webinar, a closing survey is gonna pop up. We'd love for you to take um, a quick minute to fill out those three questions and let us know what you thought about the presentation today and also let us know what future topics you'd like to hear from from us including additional sure call training and certification training um, so with that being said thanks again for joining us and hope to see you next time <laughs>